Hi, I'm Steve Carroll, and I'm here to talk about my new book, Forever Young. I can't recall exactly when I got the idea for an old tree on the cover. It came along at some stage um, when I was thinking about the paradoxes of age in the book, that you can be terribly young but also have a certain childlike wisdom, um, uh, which people can lose as they, as they grow, that sort of intuitive knowledge of things. Um, and you can be old and also have the wisdom of age as well, but you can be old and quite uh, and silly as well. So the, and I thought at some stage having an old, gnarled, windblown tree on the cover caught somehow the spirit of the book. Um, that it's, a, it's called Forever Young, but the tree is old and has survived um, somehow. So it's about resilience as well, too, I think. Well, I didn't want to fall into the, to the whole notion of, um, of the book being a nostalgic book, because you don't want that. It achieves nothing. But in lots of ways, it's, it's um, about or examines notions of nostalgia, um, especially one of the characters who's an expatriate, and he thinks about um, um, this whole notion of nostalgia, and he thinks, first of all, it's, uh, it's about you know, a yearning for place. Um, uh, but after a while, he realised it's not, you know, because if you go back there, the place has changed anyway. You're not going to achieve anything by going back to where you were. So what is it that you're yearning for? That place in connection with you when you were young. And so does that mean that the really core element of nostalgia is not a yearning for place, but a yearning for youth itself? Um, I purposely chose not to set it in 1975, because it, uh, well, it's becoming a kind of cliche now. Um, it, uh, uh, and it, uh, also, it's kind of almost asking the drama of the days of the sacking to actually do your work for you. I preferred the sort of um, the more elegiac times of, of the post-sacking years. Um, I don't want the book to be, um, to, to, to seem as though it's politically taking sides, um, um, or it's even um, pedantic about the Whitlam years. Um, uh, uh, it, it actually does embrace all different points of view. And the task as, uh, as a novelist is not to actually take any one point of view or favour any one point of view. I think your task as, uh, as a novelist is to actually entertain all of these points of view. And we called ourselves the Whitlam generation. We thought of ourselves in those terms. Um, began to... Well, uh, leave their 20s behind and move into their 30s. And it's that time when um, um, they crossed the shadow line, if you like. And this is the way it's referred to in the book. They crossed the shadow line from their youth into their more mature selves. Um, the lives that they had before, they know they've got to leave behind or they recognise it in the course of the book. Um, that a certain kind of growing up is inevitable and growing old as well. And the whole notion, I suppose, of being forever young is that they won't be, but in lots of ways they will always think of themselves as young. And they will always have that, um, that, that almost um, that aspect of, of um, idealism about them. And that, to an extent, is, that, is, is, is one of the core themes of the book. Um, just the movement from, um, from oneself into a, another self and recognising that quite possibly that life is not just one self, you're never just one person, but you are ultimately a succession of selves. And I remember when I finished The Time We've Taken, um, uh, thinking I'd finished the whole Glenroy sequence of books, but I was, I was also preoccupied with... Um, the idea even then of writing a book about what became of the Whitlam generation. Um, because the time we've taken is, 
is the is the Whitlam generation on the way in. Um, it's 1970, um, and um, it, it's the incoming tide. Um, with 1977, um, that whole upheaval of of those Whitlam years, and it's um, one of the characters in the book says, you know, um, that those years gave us the nearest thing to a revolution we'll ever know. Um, and I think there's a lot of, I obviously I think there's a lot of truth in that because I wrote it. Um, but uh, I also remember when I finished the time work taking, thinking, I think I'd like to do a book about the aftermath of the Whitlam years, if you like. And this is, Forever Young, is that aftermath. And, um, and this the, Forever Young is, if you like, um, marks that period that we moved away from the early 70s, away from the idealism of the 70s and into the world of experience and into, ultimately, the world that we have now, a very rational one. It, it is optimistic in the sense that what will prevail, hopefully, will be the best of us. There will always be new worlds, there will always be cycles of discovery. You think you've discovered all there is to discover, but uh, a new generation will come along, or you um, might, um, <laughs> um, in a sense, um, discover um, other parts of your, as you grow older. You may discover um, an adventurousness in yourself that you thought you'd lost. And so discovery goes on and on, and new worlds and old worlds merge. Um, it's, um, it, it's, 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 it's a continual process. So I suppose it's actually also consistent with that whole notion of progress that runs through all of the books as well. So that's what I've got to say about the book. Um, I hope you like it. I did the best I could and I can't do anything else.